Hello and welcome to Right Now for Thursday the 9th of November 2017, I'm Tim Wilms. Following Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's decision to finally compel MPs and Senators to disclose their citizenship status within 21 days, he's finally taking a tough stance on the issue. He is threatening to extend the parliamentary sitting year so that politicians cannot escape to their end-of-year holidays before completing their citizenship declaration. The deadline for disclosure is December 18th. The public would agree they want all MPs to produce documentation as soon as possible so the integrity of our parliament is upheld. Pressure is growing on the government to refer Liberal MP John Alexander to the High Court over British citizenship by dissent. His Sydney seat of Benelog is considered marginal and could be lost in any by-election. However, the pressure has now turned on Labor MPs Justine Key, Susan Lamb and Josh Wilson over their citizenship status. Also, it has been revealed that Senator Jackie Lambie's father was born in Scotland and could also have citizenship by dissent. Dominating the news cycle today is nationalist group Patriot Blues, confrontation of Labor Senator Sam Dastyari in a Melbourne restaurant over his Islamic and Chinese connections. The provocative language of uh, Patriot Blue and their leader Neil Erickson has led to their actions being condemned by the mainstream media, the political establishment and even some conservative commentators. However, they still behaved much better than your typical leftists and did not obstruct Dastyari's movements and uh, once they had their say, they moved on and left. They also confronted leftist protesters outside the Immigration Department. One of this group's core mission is to give the left a taste of their own medicine. Previous activism they have engaged in is interrupting inner Melbourne council meetings over their decisions to cancel Australia Day festivities. Some of the men at the Manus Island Detention Centre, which is going through its scheduled closure by the Australian Government, have now left. This was after the Papua New Guinea Supreme Court upheld its closure. Both the men and refugee advocates back in Australia have been using this event to protest the Australian government's offshore processing of asylum seekers. They went even further this week when they drove a car onto the Flemington Railway Line on Melbourne Cup Day to punish racegoers for their, for their alleged complicity in the government's policy. It would seem that these men on Manus Island now, that the centre is not being reopened, don't want to continue living without water or power to fuel the left's agenda, so have now moved to the other accommodation that was arranged for them. The first Tuesday of November every year in the United States is Election Day. The two most prominent contests were the Virginian and New Jersey uh, gubernatorial races, both of which the Democrat candidates won. The mainstream media have claimed President Trump's poor approval ratings were a big factor, and his alleged divisiveness has resulted in energising the Democratic base, who got out in numbers to campaign for, donate to, and vote for these governors. However, both states were won by Hillary Clinton in the presidential election last year, and are normally blue states. The approval of the Democratic Party is also low, so this result is not really a rebuke of Trump's agenda. Most governorships don't go up for election until next year when the midterm congressional elections are also held, which will be the real test of Trump's support. Thanks once again for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe, and check back here tomorrow to see what is happening right now then.